All right. Joining me now is the outlaw himself. Dan Hardy is here. A uh, guy that's kind of got his hand in a little bit of everything on the media side and still a free agent on the fighting side, correct? Uh, yeah, at the moment. At the moment. Although maybe not by the end of the week. We'll see how the conversations go. Wow. Things are things are up. Well, I was going to ask you how the interest was, but uh, you kind of you kind of revealed it there. There's been a, a lot of interest in the outlaw. Yeah, well, you know, a, a comment was made the other day by John Wayne Parr saying that he'd be keen to fight me if I was to step into into the one circle. So, you know, that's the fight that makes sense. I've you know, got a lot of respect for John Wayne Parr. He's a, a dangerous Muay Thai fighter who, you know, I'm stepping into his rule set, but with my gloves. So, you know, I think uh, I think we'll have a lot of fun. Uh, and, you know, it'd be, it's an ideal first fight back for me because I can focus on the striking arts and, and you know, then maybe move on to a, a different rule set after maybe MMA or kickboxing. Yeah, is that a done deal, or is there still some details that need to be worked out? No, it's 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 agreed between John and I, but uh, you know we need to come to an agreement with one championship. Um, there are a couple of other options on the table elsewhere, but that that's the one I'm most interested in right now. I love it, man. So what is, what is it uh, at this point in your career for you? Is it just kind of finding those fun fights? Like obviously John Wayne Parr is a very accomplished martial artist, so is it is it testing yourself is it just trying to get back in there is it what is it for you that that makes you want to keep going on the, the uh, competitive side well there's a couple of things one one obviously is you know i've got a few things i want to test you know i'm, I'm in the process of writing my next book and it's predominantly a you know a martial arts book it's you know instructional informational based so there's a few things i want to try and test a few things i want to show that i can do uh you know i mean I, I always felt like my best fights were before I arrived at the UFC. You know, I had a couple of good performances in the Octagon, but but previously, you know, I've had I've had more technical performances, uh, and you know, I would like to be able to show people really what I'm capable of. I felt like I was too heavy in the UFC. You know, everybody's monsters over there. So when I moved over to to the UFC, I thought right, I better gain some weight, so I'm the same size as the Anthony Johnsons of the division. Um, but you know, the, the reality is, you know, my my best weight is around sort of 175. Um, so then to be able to go over to one and fight John Wayne Parr under a rule set, which is fun for both of us, a weight class, which I feel like is going to get my best performance. Um, it just makes sense, you know. And, and then, you know, with one having three different rule sets, you know, Muay Thai with small gloves, kickboxing with big gloves and MMA. Um, if I sign a multiple fight contract with them, it, it gives me a lot of options of different things I can do. Yeah, for sure, man. And they're actually, uh, I don't know if you saw this, they're trying to, some states are actually looking at, at adding one championship rules here in the, in the United States. You kind of wish that when you were a fighter that that, that was available. Like I know Colorado is looking at it and apparently some other some other states as well. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, you know, there aren't there aren't too many differences with one championship. I think, in my opinion, the biggest difference is the way that, that one score. You know, they score the fight as a whole instead of round by round. Um, but I do like the fact that they have knees to the head of, of downed opponents. I do like the fact that they have downward elbows. So the, the downward elbow rule was never was never implemented in one, which I like. Um, and the variety as well. You know, this is the, this is the other thing. You know, there are a lot of guys on uh, on rosters. You know, of MMA organizations. You know, Bellator, UFC, PFL that have got good kickboxing backgrounds or good Muay Thai backgrounds that may want to go from. MMA to kickbox into Muay Thai and try their hand in a couple of different rule sets or, you know, attempt to get different belts. In one championship, you've got uh, Rene Derrida, who's a two-weight champion, but he could quite easily cross over and get a belt in a different rule set. And, you know, that for me, that's exciting because we as martial artists should be adaptable. You know, we should be able to go from kickboxing to grappling to MMA and, and whatever else. Um, so I, I think the options make it more exciting for me. I love it, man. I love it. Now you're going to be doing a little bit on the analyst side as well for one championship. Do I understand? Is that, is that true? Yeah. I mean, I've, I've produced a little bit of stuff for them already. Um, I produced a special on Rod Tang, you know, just going through his one career uh, and one have posted that on their, their YouTube channel. And then we've had a discussion about a couple of other things that I'm going to do for them. I'd like to, I'd like to help the fans understand their, their divisions because they, you know, their top five in, in each division is electric. But it's just people, you know, because the different rule sets, it's sometimes difficult to follow who's going where. Uh, so I'm going to start doing some kind of division centric pieces for them and then some like some more technical breakdowns where I'm actually demoing finishes. Um, so nice, I've got man. a few. I love it. Yeah. yeah, I love it. I think I, told, I think you hit the nail on the head there. I think it's just kind of uh, getting the American audiences warmed up there. But I think once they once they start uh, watching and connecting, um, I think it will be it will be a pretty, uh, pretty smooth transition into the, the one championship build. But. 
What else do you have going on on the analyst side? Obviously, you're doing your thing with Full Reptile. I've met a couple of the guys out here at uh, Mohegan Sun for Bellator. You got some good people working for you. Um, what else do you kind of have your hand in right now? Um, we've got a few things going on. Um, we've just signed a deal with Glory Kickboxing. We're gonna we're their uh, their pay per view partner for the UK. So we're gonna be doing more kickboxing, uh, more K one orientated content. I mean, you know, their back catalogue is awesome. You know, I, I want to focus on like Ho Hoost and Ertz and you know some of the old greats. So so I, I'll be making some more kickboxing content. Um, as I said, I'm writing my book, which is taking some time at the moment. I'm just about to record some stuff for Dynamic Striking for their instructional uh, website. Um, the, the, the other thing that we're working on right now is getting the getting the gym, the second gym opened. Because some people will have seen on the Rough House Uncensored videos that we've started putting on our YouTube channel that we've got a we've got a good gym. We've got a core a core team of fighters, about 30 guys, but we're in the, we're in the stage where we need more space now. Um, so we're a couple of months away from moving into a bigger property and, you know, bigger mat space and growing the team and, and all that. There's, there's a lot of exciting things going on. M my day is kind of broken up and I try and manage to do a bit of everything, but sometimes there's too much. <laughs> yeah, yeah, absolutely. And uh, I guess it's safe to say life after the UFC ain't that bad. You know what? It's not that bad at all. It's not that bad at all. I, I thoroughly enjoyed my time with the UFC. You know, it gave me a lot of great experiences, both fighting and, you know, traveling and working as a commentator and as an analyst. Um, but, you know, MMA and combat sports are huge. I, I was at a, a zone launch party the other day and there's, you know, there's loads of things going on in the world of boxing as well. And it's just it's just an exciting time to be into combat sports. And I, I could literally sit at this table here in my, in my little studio at home and, and just break down fights all day. So between going from here to the gym to train the guys and back, I'm, I'm very content. Um, it's nice to be able to put a few plans and a few projects in motion. Now I'm not so UFC focused all the time. Yeah, yeah, for sure. And I mean, do you miss it at all, the UFC? Like, obviously, that was a great gig. I think fans loved connecting with you and you had your reasons. Uh, you know, you had reasons. They had reasons why things kind of parted ways. But do you have any regrets or do you miss it at all? Is there any is there any feelings like that or is it just something that that helped you build to where you are now? Yeah, I mean, you know, I, I always felt like my, my time with the UFC was going to be fine. I, you know, it was going to come to an end and I would leave and focus on my other projects. I, I didn't expect the the separation to be quite as as, uh, as turbulent as it was. I mean, um, but I think that's the only thing that's a little bit kind of regrettable but for all of it is just the way that the relationship broke down. I didn't expect the UFC to, to keep me around forever. I expected them to... I mean, every fighter that retires or comes to the end of their career is looking for a seat octagon side. And they've got loads and loads of great options coming through. They'd like to keep cycling through those guys. And that make, makes sense to me. Um, but, I mean, you know, the, the thing I miss more than anything is, is the people, is the interacting with the fighters and the coaches. You know, the, 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 bump in, you know, the bumping into people in the corridors of hotels and having a 10-minute conversation about, you know, a book that you read by Miyamoto Musashi or whatever. You know, it's like... It's, it's those bits they're the special moments um but then you know w with the team growing and the the, the idea of uh, of us traveling i think we're going to start doing some of that anyway i want to start taking the team to some of the other teams around the world and you know work with mark henry a bit and work with jack shaw down at shaw martial arts in wales and you know travel around a bit so I, you know I, i'll get those interactions back but uh i had good times with the ufc uh i i don't i don't regret anything that played out but um I'm excited for new projects moving forward. Yeah, I'm excited too, man. And it was obviously a great platform to elevate you and make people aware of the analysts that you are. So um, I'm looking forward to whatever projects you have coming up. Um, just looping back real quick before we, we finish off here. Uh, you, John Wayne Pires, any sort of timeline that you're looking at uh, for this one? I'm looking at this year. I'm, I'm looking at getting the fight organized this year. I mean, we, we know we're right at the start of August right now. And I know that um, that Singapore's still locked down, I believe, with COVID. So they're, they're just starting to get their shows back back underway. Um, but, you know, as soon as, soon as we get, get the conversation started, and I know John's keen to fight. He's always, he's always in fight shape. It's just a case of me picking a realistic timeline to get my weight down to, you know, you know around 175. Um, but it's, it's got to be this year. You know, I get the first fight this year and then start of next year, I'll start looking at a second opponent and, you know, try and get, you know, four, five, six fights in the next couple of years and, and see what uh, see what damage I can do. Absolutely love it, man. Nobody's complaining. Nobody's complaining to see you two go at it. Um, I guess physically, it's been a, quite a while since you've stepped in there. So are you feeling good health-wise? Are you feeling like 
uh, you know, when you're in the gym, like, hey, even though I've been out for all these years, I'm, I'm not necessarily missing any steps. No, I, I feel good. You know, I, I think the time the, the time out has allowed me to heal a lot, a lot of things that would have been, you know, would have been irritating injuries all the way through training camps. Um, I mean, I just I just feel good right now. My age doesn't really connect because I look at other guys around me, you know, guys that have been fighting consistently in the 38, 39. And I'm like, my goodness, you're like you've been ran over by a bus, you know, whereas I, I don't feel like that at all. You know, I've always kept myself in good condition. I've got a, an awesome little gym in my house, which I, I practically live in all day, every day. And, and the best thing about it is I've been, I've spent the last eight or nine years just being a student. You know, I've not, I've not had to be an athlete. I've not had to be a fighter. I've been able to just work on my game, work on my knowledge and, and basically rebuild myself from the ground up. You know, I'm, I'm not the fighter that I was the last time I stepped in there. I, I, if I watch my fights against Sadala or against Ludwig, I'm just, I just look sloppy and slow and and limited, and I'm not that fighter anymore. Um, so even at 39, I feel like you know a couple of extra years of competition, I think I'm gonna be able to prove what I what I'm actually capable of. I love it, Dan Hardy 2.0, man. I'm looking forward to seeing it. I appreciate your time. Good luck with everything with one championship, whatever whatever happens. Full reptile, Dan. I appreciate the time, man. No worries, man. Great talking to you.